All right, so name of the reading is Measures of Financial Risk. Let's look at the learning outcomes. So the first part uh, is actually the work done by Harry Markowitz on mean variance framework and efficient frontier. Then what is the limitation of uh, this type of framework with respect to the assumptions and with respect to the return distribution. So again, this is a highly testable point and we'll have to be slightly careful with the assumptions there. Then VAR, assumption about return distribution for VAR, holding period and explain the limitations of VAR. Then properties of coherent risk measure and explain the meaning of each property. So in this learning outcome we discussed uh, in order for a risk measure to be appropriate what properties should it have and then uh, there are some properties that we'll have to look at and we'll have to learn to identify which measure satisfies which type of probability. Then why VAR is not a coherent risk measure which means they say that it does not satisfy all the properties which are listed there. There are four of them and therefore VAR would not be a coherent risk measure in certain scenarios. And then towards the end we would learn what is expected shortfall and then compare that with VR. Okay, this is roughly the nature of the reading. So let's get started. Mean variance framework and the efficient frontier. Okay, so the way it works uh, is we have let us say two assets. Asset A and asset B. We have expected return of two these two assets. Let's say 10% and 15%. We have standard deviation of these two assets. Let us say 6% and 8% and then we have a correlation coefficient let's say correlation coefficient is 0.5 now when you want to calculate expected return of the portfolio that is calculated as weight 1 weight 1 into the return of first security plus weight 2 into return of second security or simply weighted average but when you want to calculate standard deviation of the portfolio, we cannot take a weighted average because we know the correlation will play a part there. So standard deviation of the portfolio would be weight 1, standard deviation 1 square, weight 2, standard deviation 2 square, weight 1, weight 2, standard deviation 1, 2 into correlation coefficient and then this number is under root. This is the formula for portfolio standard deviation. Now the question that we have at hand is that what proportion of amount should be invested into A and what proportion of amount should be invested into B. This is the primary question that needs to be discussed. Now the approach that which was followed by Harry Markowitz was the approach of optimization. Okay, So what he essentially started doing, he said fine, let us define one return at a time, let's say a return of 7%. Now if you put a constraint on the portfolio that the portfolio has to generate a return of 7%, how many such portfolios could be generated? So we can generate either this portfolio or this portfolio or this or this. Then out of all the portfolios that could be generated, we will select the portfolio with lowest variance. Then let's put a constraint on the returns of 8% and let us see how many portfolios satisfy that condition and then select the portfolio again which has lowest variance and then using the selection of all the lowest variance portfolio then you would draw a curve and this curve would be referred to as MVF which is minimum variance frontier and the idea is that any portfolio which is on the frontier is smarter than the portfolios which are outside the frontier. Now once this part was done then the Harry Markowitz said that this point here appears to be the lowest possible portfolio and then the name was given this was called global minimum variance portfolio and then all the portfolios which are in this region here these would be referred to as efficient portfolios these portfolios in the green are smarter than the portfolios that we see here on the white because they provide the same risk but they provide you substantially higher returns. Is that okay? So this was the starting point of finding out which were those efficient portfolios. Once that part was done, 
then one of these efficient portfolios one of these efficient portfolios was chosen to be the optimal portfolio that selection was done based on the indifference curve of the individual investors so the point of tangency between the indifference curve and the efficient frontier was considered to be the optimal portfolio for the client once that optimal portfolio is chosen so for example this is the optimal portfolio then this is to be combined with the this is to be combined with the risk free asset in fact let me draw the other way around so you would combine this is the optimal portfolio and now it gets combined with the risk free asset and then we get a series of lines which are referred to as cal and if you make this portfolio as market portfolio then we get a line as cml okay and then some relationship which was originally non linear that relationship get, gets converted into a linear relationship are we okay